So I uh, figured I'd start a little bit um, a little bit early, being as uh, you're all here and there's more of you than I thought would be here and uh, stuff. Um, so last time I had a microphone in my hand, um, I was dressed as a fairy in a gold lame leotard um, with fake, well, well, fake stuff, purple hair singing, hey, big spender. So uh, <laughs> I've got pictures, quick show of hand who wants to see what that looks like. You may you may not recover. <laughs> I'll be back for it later. <laughs> All right, that's enough. You don't want to. That, that's rude. I'm sorry about that, everybody. <laughs> um, so my talk today is. Can I just try the other microphone because I kind of like to walk around a little bit so that you. Yeah. Is working? Oh, sorry. I'll try and turn it down a little bit. Uh, so my talk today is uh, Social Networking Special Ops Extending uh, Data Visualization Tools for Faster Pronage. Um, I almost called it, um, you know, after Tom Ryan's talk at Black Hat, getting in bed with the Submeister, but um, I thought nobody would turn up to that. Um, so, okay, um, I'm going to rattle through quite a few slides um, pretty quickly. There's a ton of stuff uh, out on my website uh, in a white paper, so don't worry too much about the details, it's all in there. Uh, quick disclaimer, uh, if anybody does happen to know who I work for, uh, then this talk has got absolutely nothing to do uh, with that particular organization. I'm just talking here uh, by myself, for myself, and, uh, well, you get the idea. Okay, so um, what are you in for? today. Um, first of all, I'll give you a quick intro to social network analysis and visualization. So I'm assuming a lot of people are already familiar with that sort of stuff. So that's going to go through really quickly. The details are in the white paper. I'm going to do a case study with uh, Twitter and a tool called Maltigo, which I'll talk a little bit more about. And then something a little bit darker using uh, Facebook and uh, Maltigo. So, okay. Uh, goals of the uh, presentation. want to leave people with an overview view uh, or appreciation of really what's happening in this field. I'm uh, no expert uh, in this sort of stuff, but there's plenty of people that are, so hopefully can generate some interest in this room and you can go off and play uh, with this yourselves. Um, I want to expose you to some of the ideas that you can imply in different contexts as well. So I'm talking about Twitter and Facebook, but as you'll see, you can apply this to just about anything that you want to look at in terms of visual representation. So um, quickly, who's the talk aimed at so that I don't waste anybody's time? Well, I might waste your time, but at least, you know, that's your decision then. Um, so um, on the left-hand side, you've got data visualization dudes, and on the bottom, you've got social network analysis dudes. So uh, if, like me, you fit into the uh, the noob category, um, this talk will probably be uh, pretty interesting to you. Um, if you fit into this category and you're a data visualization expert or a social network analysis expert, um, you may get something out of it. And uh, if you're there, then you probably already get it. Um, but stick around because I've got a free skateboard. Um, so, uh, who am I? Um, so, I, I don't know if it's the same for everybody else, but you know, when you sign up to Twitter, you look for a name, um, and that name's gone. So, my nickname at school uh, used to be Suggy, and everybody calls me Suggy back at home. Um, so, I look for Suggy, and somebody's got that. So, then I thought, well, I'll try the Sugginator because that's kind of rad. And um, somebody had got that as well. So, then I went for the Sugmeister, and there it was. And this is my favorite cup that. Uh, a friend got me for Christmas. Um, I don't know what they were trying to tell me. Um, by day, I'm in corporate security. Uh, by night, I do this sort of stuff, data analysis, visualization, watch TV. I didn't put that on there. I figured everyone does that. And uh, I attend DC 4420, one of the uh, DEF CON chapters. If you're not familiar with DEF CON chapters, go and take a look at them. Excellent source of uh, information. And um, a strange sequence of events led to me uh, appearing here, which I'll talk about shortly. So, okay, quick slide uh, here. Social network analysis, uh, target rich environment equals a problem or a, uh, an opportunity, depending how, on how you're sort of viewing it, really. 
Um, this dude here, Jacob uh, Marino, he's sort of credited with uh, being, if you like, the, the grandfather of social network analysis and that sort of graph uh, first appeared in the New York Times in 1933 um, and it's, you know, around the whole gestalt psychology um, movement. Uh, but before then, you can you know you can date this stuff back to the Greeks, but um, you know they didn't really have uh, the same sort of computing power that we've got, so they were limited largely. Um, so target rich environment, real quick. Um, there's a Cisco report that said there's 21 exabytes of data flowing around per month or something like that. There was another report that had a different figure, but of personal content like photos and music and CV uh, resumes, sorry, and you know that kind of stuff. Uh, before I got out here, um, I heard that Facebook had 500 million-ish users, um, so, you know, Twitter, what was it, 100 million and so on. So there's a lot of people got their information out there. And then there was this thing I noticed, which was called sort of the, the privacy paradox, or what I termed the privacy paradox. There was a, um, a study by Stanford University, at least I think it was Stanford, where it might have been Carnegie, I can't remember now, it's in the white paper, um, where they interviewed a bunch of students, um, and the students said, well, I take uh, security and privacy uh, seriously, especially with social networking, but when they actually then looked at their profiles uh, on these social networking sites, um, they were doing the exact opposite, um, which is kind of helpful. So 89% used their real names, 61 used, you know, identifiable pictures uh, and what have you. Um, and then finally, this is a really cool paper, especially if you've been trying to explain to your friends who say, well, I've got nothing to hide, I really don't mind. Um, they're probably not going to read this paper because it's quite a wedge, but maybe you can read it and just sort of summarize it for them. Um, I've got nothing to hide and other misunderstandings of privacy. So um, you can help them with this as well, but they say, well, my searches are anonymous. Um, I don't care that Google's correlating all my IP addresses, for example, if they, do, if they are. I don't know if they are. Um, but they're not all that anonymous. And uh, this lady here, Thelma Arnold, the New York Times, again, uh, there's her name, um, got a bunch of search results from AOL and managed to figure out that, you know, this lady who was searching for, for dogs and stuff like that, dog grooming, uh, in, um, in Georgia was this lady called um, Thelma Arnold, and her name didn't appear in it uh, at all. They were just able to track it back, and that was like in 2006 or something. So um, you can Google around for, for that if it interests you. The data is still out there, actually, so you can perform that sort of analysis yourself and see if you arrive at the same conclusion. So uh, opportunity, lots of data, lots of noise. Um, so how do you find the interesting stuff just a little bit quicker is really what this talk is about. Um, uh, by combining data mining, uh, screen scraping techniques, named entity recognition, meta crawling, and that sort of stuff, and visualization. Um, so a quick intro to some of the things that I'm going to talk about in the next two sections. Um, named entity recognition, or uh, NER, if you uh, look on Wikipedia, you'll see that this kind of definition here, parsing data to extract and classify information. Um, so... Sweet, get up, man. <laughs> nice one, man. You want to come up here and say a few words? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> All I gotta say is that ever since I was a kid, I've uh, enjoyed skateboarding, and in addition to being here and uh, enjoying this conference, but uh, this is this is absolutely beautiful. And I don't want to take up your time too much, but I really appreciate it, and thank you very much for the opportunity. I skate to create. <laughs> Sweet. Thanks very much. Nice one. <laughs> Dude was doing pretty good then, actually. If you want to come up and finish that. Yeah, um, so yeah, so completely at randomly I chose this phrase. Uh, Greg bought 300,000 shares of Legat in 2010, and if you were to put that, uh, if you don't know about Legat, then please do Google that, it's very interesting. Uh, Legat and attrition, and you should be onto something. Um, so if you run that phrase through named entity recognition, you'd come out with something a little bit like this. Now, I'm mentioning named entity recognition because it's a feature in Multigo, which is a tool I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, there's a bunch of products out 
up there that I mentioned in the white paper called like Open Calais and stuff like that. It's really cool. Uh, go check it out. So data visualization. This guy here has done uh, an incredible amount with data visualization. If you've not read this book, I recommend um, you go and get it. And he mentions a tool called uh, Processing, which is uh, which is a pretty phenomenal data visualization tool if you've not used it. Um, but he also lists these kinds of steps here on the right about how you go and get uh, visual data. So you're acquiring data, parsing it, filtering it, mine it, and then eventually you render it, and then you can interact with it. Um, well, I was really interested in this interaction piece because I want to interact with data but not leave the visualization sort of uh, uh, interface. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that, but check out the book. It's really good. Um, and then I met this guy here just before the talk and uh, met up with him a few times here at like Black Hat and B-Sides and what have you and uh, here at DEF CON, uh, Raphael Marti, and he's written this book and uh, he's put together this secviz.org site. Um, if you're into visualization, security visualization, check him out. Uh, he seems to know everyone in the field and uh, he's done some really great work and I appreciate him sort of reaching out to me. So these are the tools, some of the tools. It's not an exhaustive list. Um, you know, the secviz will um, show you a little bit more multi-ego processing, pre Prefuse and Prefuse Flare are really nice environments. There's a, a Linux distribution as well, a Linux environment you can play with. Uh, but I'm going to focus on Multigo, so uh, this is where we change the pace of the talk a little bit from the science. If the stuff in the previous, in this section has interested you, the white paper will have all the references. So um, what's Multigo? Um, so Multigo is um, uh, an information gathering tool that allows you to visually see uh, relationships and uh, typically that's been like infrastructure like DNS names, web, uh, web servers, uh, IP addresses and whatnot and also human information like email addresses, phone numbers and stuff and this is really the cool bit, it's extendable by uh, design so uh, if you haven't got something in there by default you can add uh, what are called local transforms. I'll talk a little bit more about that. So you go to the uh, Perturva.com site. This is uh, written by two guys, Roloff uh, Tomingi and uh, uh, Andy McPherson or Andrew Mohawk. Uh, they were with SensePost um, originally and uh, left to create this company. And right now, this week, uh, I'm not on commission, by the way, but there's a 25% discount uh, if you use the coupon code Black Hat. Um, so fire up Multigo, you get an interface that looks a little bit like this. Um, then you, uh, let's say you want to have a look at some of the domains. Um, I just chose six domains at random. You can't really read it here, but it's like Legat, Legat Security, the Cyberwars.com, and SecurityGeek.com with threes in the geek bit. And that's my website. And I wanted to see if there was any sort of anything in common with these uh, these websites. Um, so here's what the uh, here's the interesting thing about the MX records: um, High Tech Hustler, Cyberwars, um, Legat International Security, or Legat.com, all point to these. MX records, which of course could be com completely by chance, um, and their mine is off to something completely different. You can go a lot further with that then. You can sort of have a look at which websites are hosted on that domain. Um, what I also played around with, but I'm not going to uh, share here today, is that you could get all of the email addresses that appear on those um, websites as well, uh, and then you can see what other websites those email addresses appear on. So I did that. I got a bunch of email addresses, ran a transform against all of those email addresses, and found out that those email addresses appeared uh, largely in two main sites, which were attrition.org and um, pastebin. So, you know, if you know nothing about it, you'll find out something. So, okay. Um, second part of the talk really is around um, doing this sort of stuff, but with Twitter. Um, I thought Twitter was a little bit lame until I came to DEF CON last year um, and had my mind changed and thought I'd get into it. Um, there's a couple of people I started following. One of the guys was Ryan, Ryan Russell. I don't know if he's, he's here. He was heading off to the Hofbrauhaus. But uh, yeah, so he's a, he's a 
good guy to follow, actually. Um, and another guy I followed was uh, was this dude, Tony Hawk, the uh, the skateboard dude. Um, I'm not sure how that happened, um, but I got involved in something called a Tony Hawk Twitter hunt, which is basically where he hides uh, boxes or delivers boxes to people to hide um, around the world, um, and then they send Tony clues of where they've hidden packages, and Tony tweets out a clue to all of his two million plus followers, uh, and then they go around and uh, try and hunt it down. He got the idea as he's driving home one day, and... Um, had a broken skateboard that he uh, had it, it just wrecked and chucked it out of the window along some interstate here in the US and uh, said, hey, I've just thrown a board out of the window, go get it. And uh, a bunch of people went and, and found it. So so anyway, he, he sent out a tweet 